Welcome! Over the next few minutes, we'll show you everything you need to know to play the world's most inclusive new game, Baseball 5. Baseball 5 is a street version of the classic games of baseball and softball. It is a fast, young, and dynamic discipline that follows the same founding concepts of baseball and softball, but it can be played everywhere and requires no specialized equipment, simply a rubber ball. Ready to learn more? Let's start by having a look at a Baseball 5 field. Keep in mind the dimensions we discuss are ideal for competition, but they can be altered based on the needs of your specific space. The infield has a square shape with a base in every corner. The distance in between bases is 13 meters. The ideal shape and size of the bases is a square of 50 centimeters per side. If possible, home base can be shaped like home plate in baseball and softball. Starting from the batter's box behind home plate, the bases are numbered anti-clockwise, first, second, and third. The outfield fence runs parallel to the infield lines between first and third base. It sits approximately 5 meters beyond the infield. Its height should be roughly 60 to 80 centimeters. The fair territory of the field should have a square shape of 18 meters per side, in which one of the corners coincides with home plate. The batter's box sits outside of fair territory and has a square shape of 3 meters per side. There you have it, an official Baseball 5 field. Remember, this is a game that is meant to be adapted to the needs of your specific space. Now that you've created the field, it's time to fill it. All you need is a ball and two teams of at least five players each. Note that during official competitions, the maximum number of players on each team's roster is eight. Five in play, plus three reserves. Once you've formed teams, the game is played very much in the spirit of traditional baseball and softball, with the action split into five innings. An inning consists of a turn at bat for each team. Before play begins, the teams must submit their batting order, the order in which their five active players will take their turns at bat. This order shall be followed throughout the game unless a reserve player is substituted for a starter. The home team starts the game on defense and the guest team starts on offense or at bat. The goal of the defensive team is to eliminate or get out three players on the offensive team. Once three outs have been made, the teams can switch sides so that the defensive team becomes the offensive team and vice versa. In a moment, we will look at different ways to record outs. But first, let's look at the typical defensive formation. The five players of the defensive team shall all be in fair territory when the batter is ready to hit the ball. Here you see a typical defensive formation with a defender playing first base, second base, shortstop, third base, and a midfield position. Keep in mind that the defensive players may change their position before every action according to their team tactics and the demands of the situation. The goal of the offense is to score as many runs as possible. How? By completing the full circle of the bases counterclockwise and touching home plate. Once the defense is set, the action begins with one player from the offensive team in the batter's box holding the ball. The ball has to be hit hard or slapped either with a palm or a fist and must touch the ground in fair territory at least once. Note that the batter has to hit the ball with his bare hands, so the use of gloves or any other equipment is forbidden. The batter must also remain entirely within the lines of the batter's box until the hit ball gets into fair territory. At that point, the batter begins running to first base. With the ball in play, the defense has three ways to record outs. The first is by touching the base that a runner is forced to run to while in possession of the ball. The second is by catching a hit ball before it touches the ground. The third way is by tagging or touching a runner with the ball when they are not on a base. Let's look more closely at first base where most defensive plays are made. In order to avoid collisions, first base is double wide so that while the defensive play is made on the base in fair territory, the batter, and then the runner's goal, is to touch the base in foul territory. Once the base runner has touched the base, in order to stay safe, they must remain in the one and a half meter safe area around the base. 
In addition to being eliminated by the defense, offensive players can also get out a number of other ways. The most common of these are illegal hits. To avoid an illegal hit, the first bounce of the ball must be at least 3 meters from home plate, or 2 meters, for the under 14 category. In official competitions, umpires will have the final judgment on whether the hit was legal or not. Illegal hits will always result in an out. Other ways a batter can be ruled out include stepping on or outside of the batter's box lines while hitting the ball, hitting the ball in foul territory, hitting the ball into or over the fence without it first touching the ground, and not respecting the batting order and hitting out of turn. Another set of rules apply to base runners. Most importantly, runners must remain on their base until the batter has put the ball in play. The runner can be called out by starting towards the next base before the batter hits the ball. Runners can also be called out for passing a teammate while running the bases. Runners may also be called out if they are tagged while two or more runners are on the same base. Also note that runners must do everything possible to avoid colliding with the defenders. Should an umpire decide that a runner could have avoided a collision, the runner shall be ruled out. With these rules being adhered to, the gameplay should flow and the innings should move rapidly from one to the next. The game ends at the end of the fifth inning if one team has scored more runs than the other. In the case of a tie game after five innings, the team shall play and complete extra innings until one team scores more runs than the opponent. Should the home team be ahead after the guest team has completed its fifth offensive inning, the game is over and the home team wins. That's all there is to it. Baseball 5 can be easily adapted to your specific situation. So make it your own. Take it home and play it. <laughs>